has, uh, there's several beliefs that we have. Number one is people want to make a difference. Okay. Number two is people would like to be developed. You know. Three, there is no one best leadership style. It all depends on the individual you're dealing with and the particular goal or responsibility that you are giving them. And situational leadership just says that you need to have different strokes for different folks. And it's not only different strokes for different folks, but it's different strokes for the same folks on different parts of their job. Because I might have four or five major responsibilities in my job. We found that people move through four stages of development from an enthusiastic beginner when they're first asked to do something they've never done before, so they're excited but they don't know what they're doing. If you delegate to them, they will fail with vigor. Mm -hmm. uh, now, most people then move through a second stage, which we call disillusioned learner, which is that we all find it's more difficult to do things than we thought of in the beginning, and we say kind of, wow, we lose a little enthusiasm because this is going to take some work. Uh, and then if somebody will kind of coach you through that, that disillusion period, then you go to what we call capable but cautious, meaning I got the skills, but, you know, I've never done it alone by myself, so it's more of a confidence issue, and I need support uh, and encouragement until finally when somebody's a self-directed achiever. Enthusiastic beginners need a directing leadership style. Disillusioned learners need a coaching style. The really key thing, Todd, with making situational leadership work or any leadership theory is that you don't do it to people, you do it with them. Empowerment is, it's not really one single thing. In other words, um, uh, you know, an empowered workforce is not a workforce that uh, is just simply leaderless. Absolutely, and because things are changing, Todd, so fast, as you know, technologically. I mean, most managers, number one, are obsolete in the area that they're supervising within six months. I mean, you know, that's their... Reality. So if you're in the old command and control philosophy, how are you going to command control people who probably know more about their job than you do? But it's a, it's a journey. And when th new things happen, they're going to need help. You might not be the one that can provide it to them, but your job is to get them the resources they need in order to accomplish the goals that, that have been established. We've spent a lot of time looking at our own um, role as a, as a leader, and now we're focused on this implementation and the execution. You're talking about supporting employees in, in what they need to get things done. Are we departing from this focus on values when we start to look at this operational piece, or do you see that as, a, as an element that's still a very important one in an empowered kind of a sense? We say that a compelling vision tells you who you are, which is what business you're in, where you're going, which is the, your picture of the future, and then what will guide your journey, which is your operating values. And unbelievably, uh, Todd, only less than 10% of the organizations around the world have operating values that everybody knows about and, and all. And those companies that do usually have two problems. They have too many values, and then they got to be rank ordered. If they're not rank ordered, they're basically useless because uh, life is about value choices, and what am I going to choose? Which value is going to be the one that I'm going to take a look at? In our company, our number one value is ethical, doing the right thing. Our number two value is relationships, building with trust and respect with our people, our customers, our suppliers, and our community. Our third uh, value is success, running a profitable, well-run organization. And our fourth uh, value is learning, being an ongoing learning organization and everybody knows those and so when we're making decisions we say okay the first thing we ought to take a look at is this ethical you know is it legal is it fair is you know how will it make us feel about ourselves if we do that and so you need to drive the values right down to your people so that they they use them as decision making they ought to be in every room where there's meetings and and all those kinds of things